terms of uh, injuries, um, can we go through some of those? I, I noticed that Rich Wall said he returned to training this week uh, for starters. Where he, is he at and when could we see him be available? Yeah, Rich is back in training this week. Um, I had a schedule. You know, we thought six to eight was the window, and uh, he returned to training in five. So that's a positive. Um, you know, when he'll be available, if he'll be available, will depend on how he looks this week. The, the good news is he's actually been doing a lot of work in the last three weeks to be prepared to be in training, and he's done the full training load. Uh, today was a pretty, pretty hard day. You know, good session, and he got through it no problem. So. Um, you know, there'll be some decisions, I think, at the end of the week um, with regards to whether or not this is the game that he that he goes in. Um, obviously, we have 11 games to go. And, uh, you know, if he's healthy and, and uh, ready and fit, then uh, he's going to be in there. And then Espria and Maddox uh, were both uh, still out over the weekend. How are they? Maddox doing better. He had a shoulder. Injury, we sent him home from Houston because, uh, you know, he had kind of a, uh, I think it was an AC kind of shoulder joint uh, sprain. So he's doing better. He trained, trained a little bit today. Um, and uh, Alvis was on, obviously on the bench. He had sore hamstrings, didn't feel like he could be uh, ready to start. He played six games. Um, so that was one of the factors in the decision. He played a lot of games. and. With D, he only played three, and D felt like he was ready, wanted to play, and Alice felt like he was a little bit kind of tight and um, preferred to be on the bench for limited minutes. You, you also have Peterson and, and obviously Marco Farkan out as well. Uh, we know that Far Farkan did not play yesterday in the home road game. Uh, can you give yeah. us an update on those two guys? Yeah, too bad. Obviously, we would have liked to, for him to play in that game. Um, you know, it was a good feather in his cap, the club's cap, to get a guy. Home run, homegrown game, but uh, you know he obviously had the injury, so uh, he couldn't go, and uh, he's still out. He hasn't been in training. Um, he's a little bit behind schedule, actually, so he's still feeling a lot of pain in that ankle. And you know, if you're an old salty uh, vet and you've rolled your ankle five, six times, uh, those things tend to bounce back a little quicker. With a young guy like him, it's probably the first time he's. It is the first time he's he's sprained that thing, so uh, it always takes longer the first time. Uh, Vitas uh, back in training this week as well, uh, so you know he, he will be available for selection. Um, last week we didn't feel like he was ready and fit enough uh, to play, but uh, most likely this week he could be available for selection. So you've got guys like Ridgewell and like Vitas getting back now in in spots where Roy Miller has been filling in pretty consistently through the course of the season yeah. and has done well. What happens to him when these guys come back? Are, are, are these open sort of competitions for that left center back and maybe even less about left back spot? Uh, or, or do you still see him as depth? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't care who plays. I always make decisions based on who I think is the best guy to play in, um, in each game. And the, the more guys get opportunities to play and build a case, uh, an audition, as I call it, for parts, um, the more I think they earn a little bit of uh, that decision and that trust. Um, there's certain guys that are always going to be in there when they get back because they're at that level where they're just going to be in there. The Diego Valeri's and the Nagby's, you know, the world's. Um, I would put Ridgie in that category because when he's when he's fit and he's healthy, he's he's, he's a notch uh, better in terms of caliber, a player, um, and what he brings to our team. Um, there are other positions where I think it's it's up in the air, and uh, I would say the outside back positions for sure, based on the fact that Zarek's had a good run, um, Roy Miller's had a good run, um, that uh, those positions for sure, it's pretty close. Uh, and I, I would say it depends a little bit on current form, matchup. I'm, I'm real big on matchups with the outside backs versus the wingers, and. There are certain outside backs that I feel are better matchups for certain guys in certain games. So that has to be a factor when it's really close like like that. And, uh, you know, it's tough, too, because when you look at what Zarek brings, what Alvis brings, two completely different players. 
uh, you couldn't have more polar opposites. Um, and so you got to kind of pick what you want to get out of the game a little bit, uh, and what you, you know concerns your the opponent, but also what type of game plan you want to shape up. Uh, last two games, we felt the matchup was really good for Zarek with regards to who who he was playing with or, or against, the type of winger, more of a clever guy that comes in. And uh, we felt possession in the last two games were massively important, and you, you saw that. You know, he did well against those those wingers, and uh, we kept the ball really well through him. You won't get quite as much um, what I would call bomb on, where you you know uh, box to box work. Um, but she'd probably get a little bit more, like I said, possession. And uh, with Vitas, I think similar. You know, with Roy, um, he's shown to be a very good uh, defender. Uh, you know, whether it's center back or outside back, extremely solid. And uh, you won't get quite as much prep going forward as Vitas. Uh, you'll get good possession, though. Um, you know, and then when you look at the balance as well, you know, obviously if you play one a little bit more forward, you know, balance it out with another guy. Zarek kind of would balance you a little bit more out with the right if you go with a Vitas. If you go with an Alvis, Roy might balance you more out. Some games you might want to go with both attacking. Some games, like the last couple, we felt uh, more conservative was the right approach because we felt we'd get enough attack. So those are all little considerations. The other one is just the chemistry of uh, the partnerships, you know, center halves and the wingers. And I'm a, a big believer in the, the chemistry of the winger with the outside back. And I, I think Blanco and, and Roy have played really well together and there seems to be a good trust there. Um, but Vitas has played well with Blanco and, and Nagby as well. So those are fun things to play with a little bit and think about and analyze. And I, I love having options like that. And I feel like when I have options like that, I can come up with the right decision versus when I have no options, it's just they're in and you know, you pretty much who's in, you craft the plan based on you know who's healthy.